Hi, Jim Benson here from Personal Kanban and Modus Institute. And I want to talk about micromanagers. And we've all had micromanagers. They come to us and they help us by telling us in minute detail how we should do what we should be doing and to tell us exactly why also in minute detail we failed to do that when they were very, very, very clear with us the first time about how to do it. And those people drive us crazy. And we say, I hate that guy, I hate that woman. But those people are, oddly enough, also human beings. And when they go home at night, more than likely there's somebody there waiting who's pleased to see them. So their reactions, their micromanagement might not be some ingrained personal defect that they have, but it could be a natural reaction to the system that they're in which strangely enough is also the system that you're in. So they have their own expectations, they have their own uh, management goals, they have their own expectations from others that they have to meet. So they're reporting to people and those people are saying things to them like, I really think that this project should be done on time, on budget, and in exactly the way you told me to, which I've pretty much already forgotten, so get to it. And so then they go off, they know that they're already on shaky ground, and the only way that they feel like they can protect themselves is to watch you every second to figure out what it is you're doing. And that's happening because you have visualized your work like this. Big blank slate. You're sitting there typing away, they don't know what you're doing, they're getting more and more nervous. So they sit in their offices and they get more and more and more nervous, and then finally they come to you and they say, what are you doing? And then you say, uh, I'm, I'm doing this. So, is, is that all you're doing? Well, no, I'm, I'm doing this other thing and these things and, and five other things besides that. And uh, it doesn't sound like enough. I'm doing 10 other things uh, that are like uh, this one and this one and I'm doing this one. And then after you know, you're listing things and after a while I say, hey, uh, that last one sounds important. Uh, okay. Tell me about it. Uh, well, I started off by talking to Julie and she and I whiteboarded this and then we created this thing uh, and then uh, we, we, and we got these other people from legal involved. You got, you got someone from legal involved? Yeah, yeah, we did because we thought we needed some, some advice. Well, I wouldn't have got legal involved this soon. Well, well, um, well we... Uh, it's not a big deal. It was just an email. Well, no, I see. I, I wouldn't have gotten them. In. So now that's where the micromanagement starts, right? You made a specific decision in your exploration of this task, and I have my own fears about, and worse yet, my own assumptions about how that task should have been done, and then you did it in some other way. I wasn't there. I don't have the context. I start to micromanage you. Okay. Notice that when we had that first conversation, you listed a bunch of things off and I didn't touch most of them. There was one thing that I zeroed in on or maybe one or two things, right? So what happens is most of the work that you're doing doesn't actually need a conversation. I forced us to have a conversation because I didn't know what you were doing. And unfortunately, what happens next is Managers are like, I'm too busy, I've got too many direct reports, I've got too much going on. I need numbers. I need to make sure that people are completing their work, that tasks are flowing through smoothly, that we're delivering things and that we're going to make our deadline. And somehow I think that there's going to be some nice way that I can show all of these tasks that are supposed to be done and then some gradual, you know, kind of burn down chart that will show us that, you know, after a while everything will be done, which has really never worked for anybody. And that's all part of managing things by numbers. So what I would do next is I would say, look, you know, we're having a lot of trouble communicating. So what I would like is for you to just keep track of these few things. And then every Friday come, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one, and you and I will figure out during that one-on-one -on -one how you can be the best you you can be. So then you both get together, right? And you start looking at the numbers. So you say, well, last week I did 28 things. This week I did 20 things. I'm like, whoa. That number's less than that number. That's bad. I was like, well, you know, I, I you know, so did you like take a day off? Well, no, I, uh, and then all of a sudden you're defending this number, which could very easily be just natural variation. 
I don't have a big enough data set to know. All I know is that big number, small number. And what frequently happens to companies that are working in this way is they generate lots of numbers. So there's never a way to actually have any appreciation for the natural variation in a single line item because there's so many line items. And so what they'll do is they'll look through like a whole row of greens until they come to a red and flip out. And again, we would like to get angry and say that they're ineffectual and stupid people for that, but that's human nature when you're given a bunch of stuff that doesn't actually mean anything. You start to look for meaning, and in this case, meaning is that something went wrong. So, you know, you did less stuff, you had more errors, you got into trouble more. And if you also notice, you know, at least two out of three of these are, are worded rather negatively. And we see this all the time where, you know, like defects, is a, uh, is, is a direct metric, right? So what we don't know from this is, as I said, the natural variation. Maybe it's, you know, stuff I did goes from 20 to 50 normally, and this is on the low end, but it's by no means you know, outside the realm of reason. So what we'd like to do instead is maybe still collect those numbers. Those numbers might not be bad things, but we want those numbers to have some context. So the team or the individual or what have you will have their Kanban and work will start to flow through the Kanban. And now I, as a manager, I don't have to come and ask you, you know, what are you doing? And you cower down here and tell me all of these things you're doing. I see what you're doing. I see what you did. And these are all the things that we didn't have to have a conversation about. Now this might have been that thing that I had a question about. This might be the hard task, the complex task, the thing that actually has some pretty nasty potential ramifications for the group and for the company. That as a manager, it, it's actually my job to make sure that this happens okay. It might be your job to do the work, but it's my job to make sure that this goes okay. So as a manager now, when I see this thing start to float up here to doing, or maybe get close to doing, now as a manager, I can come to you and say, hey, when you pull that ticket, make sure that I'm around. You know, I don't have to be around to do all the work with you, but what I do want to be around is to identify what needs to be done to make this actually complete, right? So now, when that particular piece of work happens, I and you and whoever else is involved can get together we can do the work and then I'm not blindsided in the future and you don't feel like I'm micromanaging because the manager is now part of the team. We've built a system that is precluding the need for micromanagement. So micromanagement is, in short, an outgrowth of fear on the manager's side that work won't get done. The more that we can show that that work is getting done, the more that we can counteract micromanagement.